Hello and welcome. A uh, different uh, video today. You find me uncapping and extracting honey from honeycomb to put into jars. So I'm going to run through what equipment we use. We're um, for quite a small scale operation like ourselves. We're actually fairly well set up. Um, we've, we've invested and got lucky with some auctions as well. Um, and so we've got some pretty good equipment uh, for for really a very small scale operation like this. The only downside that we've got at the minute is our extracting area is our kitchen and uh, we live in quite a small house. So to get set up for extracting, I have to devote the kitchen over to it entirely and uh, cause mayhem. And um, so in a lot of ways, this is quite a nice little document of uh, how far we will come. Uh, one day I, I dream of having a dedicated extraction area in, uh, in a new home. So uh, hopefully a few years down the line, we might revisit this video and, uh, and laugh at uh, some of the ad hoc things that we've got, to, we've got to do. So the first and most important thing is everything's sterile. Um, I am, if you've been watching the videos, you're probably aware, somewhat chaotic. Uh, I am messy inside my skull and, uh, and that tends to permeate out into everything else in my life. But you can't mess around with your business. Um, you, uh, you, you have to, you know, I can't hide behind my own nature with this. Our business it is absolutely critical that our hygiene be absolutely top notch. And so everything gets sterilized to within an inch of its life. So all of the equipment that touches honey is stainless. It has all been very, very scrupulously sterilized. And then all residue of, of soap and detergents is absolutely rinsed off, so that's not tainting the honey either. And that's absolutely critical, because that will that is, can be detectable in the flavor. Um, and so, we'll run through our equipment. So here we have the uncapping tray. So this is warmed as well by water and a thermostat and a heating element underneath the tray here. So it's it's got a few dints in uh, through use and um, but it is sterile. Um, and what we have here is where we get the cappings wax off with this heated uh, uncapping knife here. So this isn't actually even that sharp but it has a heating element in it. It's getting quite warm now already and, um, and that just helps us cut through the uh, cut through the cappings nice and rapidly. And uh, then they're kept here with this mesh at this end which um, separates out any honey. There's an outlet here where I put a, a sterile bucket to catch all the honey that comes out with the uncappings uh, so that we don't waste anything. Your uncappings wax is your finest grade wax. Most of the wax that I melt out is really only fit for candles but we keep the uncappings wax to one side. We have plans in the future for a bit of a line of cosmetics that's uh, something that Kate will one day talk to you a little bit more and so we've got a good stockpile of cappings wax that's our finest grade and is worthwhile for, for sort of soap making or hand creams and anything else that you need absolutely top-notch wax for. So here we have our spinner. Now we've currently got it set up as a tangential spinner. Um, I'm really cross. I have the bits for a radial spinner which would be more suitable for our job today um, but annoyingly the um, the specifications on the spindle in the middle here uh, are slightly too small so this adjuster here um, is what I would be able to get this basket off and I'd be able to put our radial one. So the tangential one is good because it is big enough to actually put even a brood frame in so it's a useful tool to have and if you've got a pick if you've not got the budget or space to have both um, actually I would probably say have the tangential but it does only do one side of the honeycomb at a time the radial one they're spun out like the spokes on a wheel, as uh, facing outwards, and you can just put only um, super frames go in, but they then um, just need one go, and you spin them, and it does both sides at once, and it's much, much easier. And you can put more in, so in a spinner this size, um, we'd actually be able to get 12 frames in radially, whereas we can only get six frames in tangentially like this, and I have to stop halfway, flip them over, and do the other side. So here is the melotherm. So the melotherm is just a tank with a heating element in and this is the only bit of sieving uh, or, or filtering the closest we get to. It goes through quite a rough muslin gauze there just to take any big particles out. Now the heating element is uh, 
thermostatically controlled and we keep that really low. All that is is to make the honey a little bit more runny for jarring so that that, that eases this up but uh, we keep it at 50 degrees honey starts to chemically alter you get this HMF hydroxymethyl furfural, um, which is what you get when honey is pasteurized and what gives some honeys particularly sort of shop bought if you go to the supermarket honey um, that will be pasteurized and that will have quite a lot of HMF in and it gives it that slightly bitter aftertaste a raw honey like we do um, won't have that uh, aftertaste. Now the honey goes through the melotherm here and I keep this at 30 degrees well below any threshold where HMF might start to happen uh, and so it is just to make it that little bit more more uh, I, viscous? No, the other one. Um, a little bit more runny, a little bit more liquid. I'm gonna have to put a subtitle up at the end of this because I've completely lost the uh, lost the opposite word to viscous here. Uh, <laughs> I've been concentrating quite a lot getting ready for this. Um, so yes, and um, yeah, so this is this will be the last thing that it goes through before we end up going down to our little tap here, which is where the jarring will happen. So here we go, the knife is up to temperature, the uncapping tray is up to temperature, I'll just make sure that I've got you in frame. So we just start from the top, angle down, let's see, you always aim for trying to get it all in one and a piece has just fallen off there. So this is just the top wax coming off, exposing the honey underneath. Oh, first one out and not bad. I've just got, I'm not touching it here, I've just got a little bit of a spot there that's not quite right. Just get that, swap over to the far side. So this side wasn't entirely capped but that should be alright, we'll just get that bit there and then down we come, down here. Trying not to dig too deep here where this is a little bit proud. I want as much of this to be going in the spinner as possible because that's where most of it comes from. So that's ready to go in the spinner. So we transfer over to the spinner, careful to be keeping it over everything that's going to capture it. You want everything as close as possible. So there it is in the radial spinner and uh, we repeat this until we've loaded that up with six of them. Okay so here are six loaded up into the spinner. Now you try and get the load distributed as evenly as you can otherwise the whole thing shakes around like crazy. Um, I'm sure the neighbours just think we've got a really old-fashioned washing machine sometimes when it knocks around. Um, so it's ready to go, all uncapped, so I flip the switch and away we go. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me cutting away in the middle of that, holding the GoPro loose in my hand over this spinning, snorting monster um, was something that I'm afraid I became somewhat cowardly about. Um, we are, as I've possibly mentioned in some of our previous videos, not that solvent at the moment and so dropping the precious GoPro in here would make good footage but I would then be, I'd be unable to get you any other footage for the rest of the year. So that's one side done and as you can see down the bottom there Honey has been centrifuged out to the side of the tank here and is now pouring out over the mesh at the bottom. So that's quite a wide gauge mesh that only, uh, that only strains out the very largest chunks of wax. Every now and again, if, uh, if your comb is a little bit fragile, uh, it will obliterate, making the most amazing noise as it starts to spin. Um, and in the spinner as it obliterates outwards and so you do get quite a big bit of wax but all of these have been fairly fairly solid so out comes one one side mostly done there we go so I just flip that around and pop it on to other side so this is presenting the other side I repeat that six times and then we spin it again Okay, so they're all flipped around, so I'll try and be a little bit braver with the spinner now, but there's really not much to see. Uh, so I've got a good firm grip of the GoPro. On we go.
there we go. Spin number one done. Now we just check the weight of these, good and light. So every now and again one will be a little bit too heavy uh, and we'll still you'll be able to tell from the weight there's still a good amount of honey still on it. Uh, and so you give it a second spin. Now I've got 14 more frames uh, to do after this. And as I'm sure you're aware, six doesn't go into 14 cleanly. Um, if I have to do partial loads, the only important thing to do is to distribute the weight evenly across the basket here. Uh, otherwise it jumps around all over the place. But probably I will have one or two that might need a second spin, looking like they've got a bit more honey in. And so probably I will just do four, more, uh, four complete loads of six. Um, and and that will be fine. And uh, yes, so we will carry on with that. If I should stop talking for a moment, you can hear that lovely dripping noise. That's honey now going through the gauze at the bottom, and uh, or through the mesh at the bottom rather, into the bottom of the collecting tank. So the collecting tank's got a tap at the end. Once we've had all of the all of the honey done, I will take you to the bucket where we pour out. Okay, here is the uh, uncapping tray after that first one. So as you can see, the honey's starting to drip down and accumulate at the bottom there. So the capping's wax here, beautiful stuff. Um, it's just sometimes worth just sort of turning it over and moving it to one side in between each load just to free up any honey that's being retained by the wax there um, to flow down. I'll be um, I'll be doing that throughout the course. There we go, we've got a little reservoir of it there. That, sort of open that up that'll start to run quite freely down um, and given time gravity will actually do almost all the work here for you uh, of separating this uh, capping's wax from the from the capping's honey the capping's honey is uh, the honey that's most rich in pollen now I have heard of beekeepers keeping uncapping honey separate for people that uh, have allergies now I'm always absolutely upfront with people about allergies there is no scientific evidence um, that honey helps you with pollen allergies and the consumption of pollen uh, has had no link demonstrated with uh, resistance to those allergies but an awful lot of people believe it and an awful lot of people come back and report that it's efficacious for them um, and so you know I, I, I say that to people just out of being uh, out of just a sense of good faith with people that I, I just won't when people say oh is it good for allergies I have to be honest with them um, I don't even like to weasel word it. Um, I'll just be upfront and say there's no scientific evidence. And actually, nobody's ever said, "Oh well, I won't buy it from you then." Um, but I just feel better about that in terms of my own personal integrity. I don't like to be get anywhere near selling snake oil. What I'm selling is honey, and the reason that I sell it is because it's delicious. So here we are pouring down into the bucket. So I'm always a little bit concerned. Our um, our spinner here we got from an auction. Uh, I'm always a little bit concerned about the visuals here with the rusty stand there, but the rust is only on the inside. The uh, It's entirely stainless, every surface that the honey gets into contact with. Um, I put these, uh, these plastic bag liners in the bucket, so these are sterile, and uh, they'll make uh, any losses of honey on the uh, in residue in the bucket much less. It's much easier to get all the honey out using these sterile food bags. Now, as we move up back up to here, you'll possibly be aware of some particles still in there. There's quite a lot of crumbs of wax, and uh, we do need to go through the melotherm to get those out. There's quite a big bit coming through. Um, now you can leave honey to settle and the wax will float up to the top and then you can skim the top layer off uh, and that's quite an effective one if you don't want to if you don't want to sieve or filter at all uh, you can do quite nicely with that um, but we haven't really got time to allow things to settle and that then makes the melotherm even more critical because the honey can start to really thicken up um, and become very hard to pour after that if uh, I probably don't really need to warm this honey at all, it's pouring really, really nicely. And now into the melotherm. So you see it goes in contact with that warming element. You need to make sure that's nice and covered, including the thermostat. You can see the bubbles and the particles there. So this will then go through that gauze, you can hear it 
that tinging noise is honey hitting the very bottom of the melotherm into the final collecting tank before we pour into jars. So I will just fill this with all the honey we've done so far, because that's all from one source, that's all from St Helens. I'll be repeating all of this for Ride and Roxall, but we'll just follow the St Helens through from beginning to end. That sounds like that's going through at a good pace. Now, the bags, I tend to find with the inside of the buckets, if I sterilise the buckets really fastidiously, ready for food grade, I don't have too much of a problem doing that, that's fine. The drying time is the longest time there, but these bags are a really good in in innovation. I picked these up from Mary Case, who's a very well respected beekeeper here on the Isle of Wight, she does this. And it's genius, absolutely genius. And this, you know, these little tips and tricks that beekeepers can pass around to each other are gold dust. They're better than money because when someone gives it, gives you an idea, you both have that idea, um, and it doubles the number of people benefiting from it. Um, and uh, these food bags are fantastic. And what you do is you you can just hold them out and wring them through your fingers to get the very last honey residue that could get out. There'll always be a thin residue on the inside of that, but actually I can give that back to the bees and they'll clean that up and put that back into the honeycomb. And so your actual wastage becomes very, very minimal using this sort of system. All right, the last part, jarring. So. Here's the bottom of the melotherm. Now, this is going to be surprisingly tricky with uh, just one hand, but I'm going to do my best. Just got to make sure that the jar is underneath. So, here we go. Perfect hit. So I can just increase the flow rate. So, here it comes out of the spout down to the jar, filling up nicely, looking for 227 grams. I stopped just a little bit before to account for what's in the air at the time, and just slightly overshot, which I always prefer to undershooting. So there we go, first jar out, as you can see there's a few bubbles there, they'll all rise to the top and it'll clear beautifully before, by the time it's uh, on sale in nine days time. So I hope that that has been interesting and informative to you and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Take care.